Hey guys, this is Awesome John 22 coming at you today with another review. And um, we have a new <laughs> leader class Ultra Magnus coming up in the Combiner Wars toy line. It's it's probably already out places. It's already out online. And I do plan on getting it. And I do plan on reviewing it. And so I figured I would bring in the other leader class Ultra Magnus. Yes, there have been other big Ultra Magnuses. But this is the recent one. This is the one that everyone thinks of, I, I at least that I know of, when they say Leader Class Ultra Magnus. So I figured before we take a look at the new Leader Class Ultra Magnus, based on his recent comic book appearances, we would take a look at the other Leader Class Ultra Magnus. And here he is. So let's um, go ahead and get into the review. Pop the, the, and here he is, so let's go ahead and get into the review proper by getting him transformed up into his vehicle mode through the magic of jump cuts. And we're, here we have animated Ultra Magnus in his vehicle mode, and he looks great. He's some kind of big um, military weapons truck thing. I don't know if this is actually based on a real design, but it looks absolutely freaking amazing. He's got this cool, like, um, angular front end with a total of eight wheels, and uh, you can see here is his camera does store in the vehicle mode quite well. Actually, it's slotted in there uh, very, very good. It doesn't fall out at all. It looks absolutely fantastic. If I had one complaint about it, is that these that are clearly supposed to be as taillights do not sit flush with the back of the vehicle, and that you have these panels here that are kind of loose, but, I mean, it's not something you have to worry about super much. It's not a big deal. Um, and he's great. He's got all kinds of details on him. Like He's got rivets everywhere. He's got some uh, grates here. He's got some little lights here. This is actually a button. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, there's no button on this side. And, uh, I mean, yeah, it just looks absolutely... Look at the suspension under there. It's just great. It looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, just a just a good... Just a great all-around design for vehicle mode. And, yes, he's not a white Optimus Prime. He's not even a semi. But he is a big freaking white truck with blue on the back and becomes a large robot. So I'm, I'm pretty cool with it. And, um... Got a little something there. But yeah, um, I, I, I like it a lot. It's it's a little hard to get the legs lined up perfectly so that all the wheels sit on the, the uh, surface at the same time. But once you do, he rolls just fine. And he has so many uh, accessories here. He has this big cannon thing that can fold up and aim forward. And uh, then you have on these little rails these guns that look like some kind of like... I don't know, what, what do you call those? Like rail guns or whatever? That might, I'm, I'm, that might be the wrong thing. But these pop up out of here. So he's got these, they look like energy weapons, and then these up here. And then he's got, if you fold down the cockpit, he has these uh, long barreled guns that fold up onto the top there, and then slide out. And these look like battleship guns, which is just really freaking cool. And then he's got on the front, under these panels, he's got fold-out uh, dual Gatling guns, and just, just, he's armed to the teeth, and it's fantastic, because all of these things can fold away, and you can have a really clean look for him, you can have a really decked-out look for him, and it just works, it, it works so well to give the figure extra options, I just absolutely adore everything that went into this figure. It's just so good. For a character that we see maybe like five times in the entire series, they put this much work into it. When they could have just kind of like given us a really um, like halfway job like, like they did with the um, Voyager class uh, uh, lug nut. In, instead they gave us something really fantastic. And yes, it's because he's an Autobot and the uh, the toy line for Transformers Animated really favored the Autobots. I mean, I think there was an Optimus Prime in literally every size class. But, I mean, this is just... This is great. And it's the, the biggest Ultra Magnus we'd ever gotten. Like, in terms of, like, sheer bulk and size, since the original Ultra Magnus and his repaints and recolors and stuff, aside from, um... R.I.D., the original R.I.D. Ultra Magnus that was, like, whatever they called it at the time, Ultra Class, I think... Which I used to have, I don't anymore. That's a whole story we'll probably get into at some point. I may have actually talked about it, but it, it, not not for today. Not it's not a thing for today. But yeah, this guy is huge. And with the new leader class, 
Ultra Magnus coming, this is going to be the figure that it's going to have to live up to in my mind. Not City Commander, which I do have the Fans Project City Commander set for Classics Ultra Magnus. That is not my definitive Ultra Magnus. This is my definitive Ultra Magnus because it's it's just such a satisfactory figure straight from retail. And so, without further gushing, I'm going to jump right into Transformation, which I'm going to kind of bring these up. I'm going to split his legs just enough that I can... Ah, uh, it'll come. Hold on. Get his hammer out of there. There we go. But you can see how, how secure it is in there. And for the hammer, uh, we just unfold this, and then... There's like a little switch or something. Oh, there we go. You just, you just pull the handle down, and... It extends to its full full size. Unfortunately, this hammer does not fit in Optimus's hand, uh, so you can't use this to replicate once he got his hands on the hammer and was using it against Megatron. But there is a set for that, which I do plan on ordering at some point. So maybe we'll talk about it eventually. Um, anyway, set that off to the side, and I'm going to leave him in this configuration with these weapons extended, the ones that I have extended right now. Uh, they don't really get in the way. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fold these panels up like this, then take these panels, fold them away like that, and what these do is they hide these joints here that are quite large and would stick out a lot. And now, see, they didn't have to do that. Those joints, I mean, they don't look too bad, but they gave us these fold-away panels that hide them anyway, and I think that's just that was that's just a great extra touch that didn't have to be there. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to unpeg these sections here. We're going to do that on both sides, of course. So he's quite large and I'm having a little bit of trouble holding up that one's stuck apparently. But yeah, there we go. There's that. And um, these will fold up like so. And uh, we will get to that in a minute. Because I'm going to do the upper section first. I think it's just a little easier for me. Uh, we're going to split this. You can see his head in there. You could not see his head before because it was blocked by um, his hands, which are quite large. Uh, I guess you can kind of see it. But now you split this, and then you can see his hands there. And what we're going to do is we're going to lower this down, and we're going to take these, and they just rotate around, and they just kind of click into place. And we'll do that on both sides. Of course, there we go. Straighten out his arms, and then uh, kind of fold these shoulders up into like their logical, like normal position. I just kind of extend this out, give clearance for us to fold his legs down, like so. Of course, we'll do that on both sides. You can hear the ratchet joints there. Very, very nice ratchet joints. Um, continuing with the upper body, though, we're going to take, and this is the, probably the trickiest part of the whole thing. Um, he has these kind of accordioning joints. You have to kind of just kind of wiggle it up until it goes like all the way up there like that. Now he's got this gap there and he rotates this in and there's one arm done and we'll just do the same thing of course on the other side and it's not a huge issue this accordion joint it's just that it's tight enough and it's in a precarious enough spot that um, you just have to kind of be careful when this panel popped off. That, that does tend from time to time. Um, now we can take these panels and we can fold them back around like that, fold this into place. And now you have both of his arms done. Um, and we will talk about the arms in a minute. Next, take this uh, whole section and um, you can kind of position it back there or you can fold this back up and bring the whole thing forward, which as we saw in the intro is how I like to do it, so that's how I'm going to leave it. Uh, come down here on his feet and take the toesies from behind, bring them forward, and then on another accordion joint, we're going to uh, untab this and then accordion this over, and you can see this slots in there, and this, well, it's supposed to slot in there. It's not quite doing it. You get the point, though. It, it sits uh, kind of like that. This, this, I have a feeling this should be further over, but it, it's not that big a deal. Um, well, of course... Do the same thing on the other side, and this slot here just kind of holds it in place. And uh, then we're going to take his 
tail light panels and just fold them down flush with the sides of his legs. But that, yeah, there you go. You have um, Ultra Magnus in his robot mode. Um, I'm sorry, I cut there. I was having a little bit of trouble with one of the with uh, with the knee joints until I remembered I actually fan transform this guy a little bit. But we'll get to that in a second. You can see he is holding his hammer, and I have it kind of in like the like my own personal fan mode for the hammer, um, where he's holding it at the end of the handle instead of higher up because the way he is supposed to hold it you can see he's got this tab and it will slot in right into kind of the crevice here between his fingers and thumb if it will go in there for me there we go and you just close his hand around it but i always feel like i mean that's a really cool how huh, i'm going to judge you kind of pose but i never really feel like it feels dynamic enough so i usually just go like this and then the hinge will just kind of end up resting in his the crook of his hand and now it looks like he could actually swing it and do some damage with it but as you can see all of the weapons that you can deploy in his vehicle mode are still deployable here in this mode but you can also uh, fold them away like you can bring this up and then lower it down and put them on his back um, I tend to leave them up I think they look, oh, that's kind of wrong, um, I think they look <laughs> better up like so. And um, as for the fan transformation, let's look at his feet for a second. I, they clip all the way up like this, I typically leave them down like this, and I'll show you why. Because if, see, if you fold them into place, yes, his legs are on ratchets, um, and he, well, his, his hips are on ratchets, you either have them like this, or you have them like this. And so he's either leaning forward or leaning back too far unless you leaning forward and then you just kind of pop these feet down one notch and he's still perfectly stable I mean perfectly stable and now he is standing up perfectly straight and it's, it's probably the one oops that was not supposed to happen it's probably the one legitimate complaint I have about this robot mode is that the ratchets don't quite line up but I mean heck that's a problem with a lot of figures and he does have tons of ratchets actually um, it's probably easier to just show you which joints aren't ratcheted. He's the, uh, these joints here, which are incredibly tight, are not ratcheted. These joints are not ratcheted. And um, these joints are not ratcheted. Um, he does not have any in the end, abdominal uh, rigid. Oh, this isn't ratcheted either. His head does turn uh, independently of any gimmicks, unlike... Uh, leader class bulkhead but we'll talk about that in a second as well um yeah uh, he's got no abdominal section because he does have a speaker here if you can't see it for his electronics he he should have had transformation noises through the entire transformation i'm not sure why he didn't i'm uh well i know why he didn't technically speaking his electronics have failed i even changed the batteries and everything but the electronics on mine seem to have failed. I don't know if it was a quality control issue or an issue with the age of the figure. Am I zoomed in at all? No, I'm not. Um, or what happened, but the electronics on mine simply don't work anymore. But the idea was that he would make transformation noises and he would make, he would like do voices and light up and stuff when you did that. And these up here would light up. And it was very cool. And I knew they worked when I first got the figure, so I don't know why they're not working now. It's kind of bumming me out. But honestly, He's great even without them. It's it, he's just I mean he's just an amazing figure. All of this detail that was present in the front end of his car or his vehicle mode, he's not a car, is still present in his robot mode. And then he's got this great stripe across the front that harkens back to the G1 Ultra Magnus's red chest with this Elite Guard symbol here. Zooming in on his head sculpt real quick, you can see just spot on the character model just looks absolutely great with kind of this like sideways look in his eye kind of like what did you do now Optimus Prime you know that whole thing um he, he's got the hammer he holds the hammer great he's got even these stripes in his side skirts have molding in them that's just that's just fantastic it just he it goes a step beyond in pretty much every single way it's just such a such a well-made figure for a character that we only saw maybe like five times in the entire series and, I mean, this is a character who was 
liked enough by the fandom that now every Ultra Magnus figure that comes out has to have a hammer. Um, they gave him a hammer in Transformers Prime, specifically because people associate Ultra Magnus with a hammer now because of this figure. It is an important figure to Transformers. It, it's just... it's. I, I have virtually nothing but positive things to say about this figure. And that is why it is this figure, and which is what I consider the definitive Ultra Magnus. I, um... I, I just, I really like this figure. Not going to do size comparisons today, uh, because I do plan on comparing this guy to another figure down the line. I hope you can figure out which one that is. Uh, so I'm just kind of going to stop here, because I'm at that point in the review where I'm just really gushing about this guy and don't really have anything else constructive to say. So, yeah, guys, that is pretty much it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it, because I certainly enjoyed making it. Uh, either way, help me out, like, and subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you feel so inclined. In the description down below, you'll find links to all the other things I'm working on. Check those out, including the uh, blog post with uh, the entire list of figures in my collection up for review. Check those out. If you see anything in it that you would like me to review, let me know, and I will see what I can do. This has been Awesome John 22 and I will talk to you guys later.